Well, uh, good morning. I'm uh, Rex Williams, Environment Canterbury Commissioner. I'd like to acknowledge the presence of Minister Brownlee and particularly Minister Adams. So uh, this project that we're talking about this morning uh, was started about uh, 18 months ago when Sarah asked ECAN to coordinate the activities to deal with hazardous waste coming from households in the red zone. And uh, through uh, excellent cooperation led by ECAN, but excellent cooperation with the Waimakariri District Council, Christchurch City Council, Ministry for the Environment, and uh, our partners in the waste industry, uh, we've had uh, good success. We were fortunate enough to get funding, initial funding from the Waste Minimisation Fund, but the job has proved to be a bit bigger than that uh, allowed for, and uh, so we've applied for further funding. And uh, with that, I'll pass the Minister. Thanks, Rex. Well, good morning and uh, thanks very much, Rex, for that introduction and acknowledge, obviously, my colleague, the Minister for Earthquake Recovery, Jerry Brownlee. So when we started going through uh, the red zone cleanup, one thing became apparent quite quickly, which was that, like almost all houses around the country, red zone houses are full of a huge range of quite hazardous materials, and we've got a, a display of some of them here today. It was our concern to make sure that those hazardous chemicals, paints, agricultural sprays, thinners, were properly taken care of and didn't end up in our waterways or in our landfills. So ECAN came to the Ministry uh, and asked for some funding to support the program. Uh, the Ministry initially provided half a million dollars towards the program. ECAN, uh, the Waimak Kareri Council and the Christchurch City Council also committed some funding and we got underway. Uh, and what we found very quickly was that the amount of hazardous waste to be dealt with was much greater than we had expected. And over the course of this program, which we hope will be completed in, two, uh, in November of this year, we're expecting to remove upwards of 360 tonnes uh, of hazardous wastes from the residential red zone. So today I'm very pleased to announce that the uh, Waste Minimisation Fund under the Ministry for the Environment has committed another $500,000 to the project, taking our total funding to well over a million dollars of the $1.4 million project to ensure that all the hazardous waste within the residential red zone can be properly uh, removed and uh, responsibly dealt with. We're also joined here today by Kevin Felstead, Deputy Mayor of Waimakariri, where they have a uh, considerable number of red zone houses that have been cleared as well. Mm. Uh, one of the things that probably is worth noting is that it's actually a good uh, opportunity to highlight the number of hazardous chemicals and so hazardous waste that are in everyday households. Uh, and I guess if I had one wider message it would be to remind people that when they're dealing with these products in their own homes they do need to be responsibly dealt with. Uh, and products like LPG bottles, paints and agricultural sprays uh, and garden sprays can be very toxic. Uh, and do need to be properly dealt with. So we're doing that in the red zone, uh, but we'd certainly encourage all homeowners to be very careful with the disposal of those products. Where are you disposing these products to? Where are they going? So all hazardous chemicals are able to be dealt with responsibly through the, the appropriate channels. So the important thing is that they are collected and dealt with, where they can be recycled. Sometimes paints uh, and some of the products can be reused. Where they can be, they are. Uh, otherwise, they are dealt with very carefully through the appropriate, appropriate uh, disposal channels. And they would be? Well, for example, we're here with uh, Trans Pacific uh, today, who are contractors on the project, and they have expertise in dealing with the disposal of any number of hazardous chemicals. Uh, and depending on what they're dealing with, they have the appropriate uh, plans in place to deal with them. And if red zone homeowners have chemicals that they'd like to dispose of, how do they go about? Well, certainly, yeah, sure. Certainly through their councils, they can uh, be in touch with the council or with ECAN, who can direct them to how to properly and safely dispose of these products, where they can drop them off, and we're very happy to receive them and deal with them. And then, of course, where the properties have now been uh, moved out of uh, and they're in the ownership of the Crown, then it's our responsibility to have contractors go in, safely remove them, and dispose of them.